I am going to take us now to the finale of the podcast. It's sort of like the name association. It's another game, but instead I'm going to give you a name of somebody you wrestled. It could be from any point in your pro wrestling career. And this will take us to the end of the show. And then I will thank you so much for your time and a great interview. And the first person I'm going to mention to you is the Blue Meanie. Oh, pass. He whacked you with a chair really hard one time. (laughs) That's about it. I don't remember. I mean... I've been hit with chairs, man. They don't bother me. I don't never have. That's fine. Uh, the next one is Road Dog. Oh, fun, fun, fun <laughs> guy. Yes. Any, uh, I mean, when you've got a big smile on your face and say fun guy, it sort of leads me to believe there's no stories you can tell. No, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I'm telling you what, man, the guy's got your back. He's a good dude. I love him. Good man. You weren't there, right? This is totally off my head. You weren't there when Billy Gunn and Tonya Harding had that dust up, were you? No. Oh, damn. I'm going to have to find out the story on that. Anyway, I'll move on. Bruce Pritchard. Clever. Clever. I like that guy. You know, uh, I never, I mean, even though he was around a lot and I got to talk to him, I never really got involved with him. But man, I some of the stories and stuff that, um, I hear um, in the earlier days with him, man, he had some great ideas. And and I also talked to him on a podcast, or not talked to him, but listened to his podcast, man, and I really love his podcast, man. They do a great job. Uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard. I don't know if you had too much interaction with Tom. Yeah, I never really got to, to, to work with him much. Uh, Earl Hebner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's a funny, uh, um, he's another one of those funny guys, right? You, and you wanted him as your referee. He was, a, he was a very, very, when he was out there, he did his job. I felt bad for him for the position he was put in with Brett and Sean. Who was your favorite referee? Was it Earl or did you have a list Earl. of favorites? Earl. There was a lot of good ones. Tim, Tim was good. Um, but it was a lot of good ones. But Earl was, was the face, yeah. you know, I really enjoyed working with him. Uh, uh, the Daily Departed Tim as well, who passed away recently. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Terry Runnels. Disappointing. Very disappointing. Um, I just, it, it felt like she had so much, so much more, and they just never got a chance to. Never really got a chance to. Just talent, talking? Talent. I mean, just, and, and, and again, I thought when you talked to her behind stage, she was smart. Like, she wasn't a dumb girl. And just don't feel like they used her the right way. Like she, she had a lot more talent rather than just being a body. It felt like she could have done more. Next one's Brian Christopher. <laughs> Short man's complex. <laughs> <laughs> He's always walking around trying to be six seven. You know, <laughs> he wanted to make sure everybody noticed who he was. Uh, but fun guy, another guy that's just really good to be around. You know, I love that guy. He was. He's, he was always a, like, whenever you were in a room, you knew he was there. Like, he was always ribbing or, or having a, something happen. It was loud. Um, and I think it had a lot had to do with because he was short. He wanted to make sure everybody knew who he was. I am in the room. Don't overlook me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am um, in the previous interview. I think it might have been um, Chaz, Headbanger Mosh, and I said Brian Christopher. And he said he had an interesting relationship with Bradshaw. Oh, I, I yes, yeah, I don't know that one. That one's a behind the scenes one oh. that I wasn't into. I wasn't into. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I was hoping for the story on that, but never mind. Uh, Ahmed yeah. Johnson. Oh man, um, I didn't get to know him much, but the time that I was there, from my, uh, from the things that I heard, he was just hard to work with. I, I, I believe uh, injurious. He uh, he had a propensity to injure himself and everybody else. He was just, I think he was too focused on being big and being this monster rather than um, understanding it's not real. Like, this is not you. Like, this is a character, and your character needs to take care of the people you're working with. Insane Clown Posse. Ah, uh, man. Um, don't know much about it. Really don't. Even though I, I was there, I just, I just wasn't around it. No, that's fine. Uh, Val Venus. Um, yeah. Uh, I think me and Val hit it off wrong at first. I think a lot of it had to do with 
you know, maybe it was storylines or something, but we never really kind of clicked in anything. Like, even though we were put together on some things, it just didn't feel like it was there. Like there was, wasn't chemistry. Um, but now um, I would say that uh, he's an expert in cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> Man, ain't that the truth? I just I interviewed him a few weeks ago. I, you're so on the money with that one. Uh, the next yeah. one, uh, in a wrestling sense, Josh Barnett. Man, what a you know he's the kind of guy you look at, you think nothing of him, and next thing you know, you're waking up in the hospital. <laughs> he's just one of those kind of guys you look at. He's a nice guy. He presents himself well, but you piss him off, man. He's a beast. How did your match go in New Japan with him? Loved it, man. I thought we had great chemistry. Uh, it, you know, that was, a, remember, we talked about the hybrid wrestling over in yeah. Japan. If me and him would have gotten together, we would have had a great, great program. We would we would have been rivals. Next one, Bob Holly. Um, I loved his, I loved, I loved the way he was able, Mr. Head, right? That's Al Snow. Oh, okay. So Bob Holly was, he was the buzz cut blonde hair. Um, jacked up, dude. I can move on. Yeah, move on because I, I, I think I know him, and in fact, he's in tremendous shape even today, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I worked. I think we were in all, all Australia together, I believe, or something like that. And he was still in great shape. I'll, uh, I'll ask you another name, then I'll, I'll Google a photo for him. Uh, oh, I've already said Robert Fuller. Uh, you wrestled. I didn't realize this. Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, that was what that was actually in uh, um, new, um, UWF, wasn't it? That's a great question. It was in the early two thousands. It it may have been yeah. an Anoki thing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, I, I I he wore the was he wore the pants, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, long hair, yeah, little, little goatee thing. Yeah, I don't remember much about that. Okay, uh, that's Bob Holly. Yes, that's him. That's right. Yeah, tremendous shape, man. The guy's a great worker. He's one of those guys that you look at and you go, man, this dude has aged well. <laughs> Next one, Sable. Beautiful. Um, didn't, I, I mean, she said hi a couple of times, but I never really got to know her. But she seemed like she was very, um, very professional. And, you know, in most cases with women, um, you know, they don't under, even understand what it is that they're doing at times. They're walking around with, you know, dresses on and heels. But, she seemed to be have a pretty good idea of a character and who she was supposed to be. So, and like I said, I didn't really get to know her a whole lot, but uh, I appreciated her because she never really got in the way or made any trouble. Road Warrior Hawk, or the Road Warriors in general? Yeah, man, I, you think about the first thing you think about is explosive. I mean, just the crowd noise, the biggest pops ever. Uh, were the Road Warriors. The characters themselves were just so, you were so attachable because you've seen the movies and the, these guys running around motorcycles and, you know, just the characters that they presented. And then for them to go out there and put on the matches, the strong guys and all that stuff. So it was tremendous. I know great, great that I was able to get to know them because I got to know those guys and, and really be around them. And I thought um, that, you know, Animal um, was, you know, a tremendous guy. For Hawk, I thought Animal kept Hawk balanced. Um, and at the end of his life, Hawk put himself in a place uh, that uh, I believe that was normalcy. He got himself back to where he needed to be um, and not taking crazy risks anymore. Uh, and unfortunately, that's the time he passed away. Yeah, the damage was done. Uh, I'll try and ask a couple, uh, a couple of uh, sort of lighter ones. Michael Hayes. I didn't know him. Sonny. Yeah, disappointing. Another story you think about was tremendous beauty, uh, smart, I thought. Um, but then just took that wrong road. Things didn't work out for her. Um, and she, she made bad choices, man. Really bad choices. And the final name I'll give you is Steven Seagal. Because why not? <laughs> yeah, he talks a lot. That's for sure. You know, Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know him, so I really don't know what to say other than what I see in social media, which is not enough. But it just seems like there's a lot of this trying to be tough, but with never really seeing him do it. Like, to me, that's what I see him trying to say, I train these fighters and they're going to go out and win. And, and, and I did this to this guy. But, but 
you never did it. Like you never put yourself in that position to go fight anybody to say that you're that guy. And also, he's got a giant wig, so it's sort of hard to sort of take him seriously when he's got that giant forestation job on, <laughs> on his head. He's like, yeah, that was the other guy. <laughs> that wasn't you. 